Hey my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart and welcome to another video in the Mastering DP600 Fabric Analytics Engineer exam. In today's video I want to show you one of the main concepts for data transformation and data modeling and it is called denormalization. So I will first explain what is a denormalization and then I'll show you how to apply denormalization by using Power Query in Power BI Desktop. Stay tuned! But before we explain denormalization, let's first focus on understanding the normalization as a base concept in the relational data workloads. Normalization is the process of organizing data in a database. The normalization process implies creating a specific data model. As we learned that our data model consists of tables and relationships, normalization enables you to avoid data redundancy within the tables while at the same time setting consistent tables dependencies through relationships. Normalization is the key characteristic of Online Transaction Processing Systems or OLTP abbreviated. Online Transaction Processing Systems are suitable for processing a high volume of transactions. When I say high volume, I mean millions of transactions per day. As the emphasis in the OLTP system is on fast processing, tables are normalized predominantly to a third normal form to support quick and efficient insert, update and delete statements. Online transaction processing systems are convenient for running simple ad hoc queries and they focus on providing a data integrity. On the flip side, denormalization represents the opposite concept. In Online Analytical Processing Systems, or OLAP abbreviated, the emphasis is on the speed of data reading. OLAP systems are designed to enable business users to understand the big picture of the data stored in the database. That means the focus shifts from a single transaction to aggregated data. Using the OLAP system, you can extract information from a large database and perform analysis to support decision making. The main purpose of the OLAP system is to generate insights from transactional data. Those insights enable understanding of sales trends, customer retention and satisfaction, or finding potential bottlenecks and improving business processes. By implementing denormalization, you are basically avoiding expensive joints between the tables and creating redundant data in the table. Well, isn't creating redundant data in the table bad, Nicola? As usual, it depends. While we already agree that you should strive to create a proper star schema for your Power BI data model whenever possible, there are certain situations when creating redundant data may increase the model efficiency and improve the overall performance of your Power BI solution. Let's examine the following scenario. We have three normalized tables containing different attributes related to products. So in this scenario, if we want to analyze the sales per product category, in the background, three joins will be performed. First, between the sales and DIM product table. Then, between the DIM product and DIM product subcategory. And finally, between the DIM product subcategory and DIM product category. This is the so-called snowflake dimension, where multiple normalized tables are used to describe a single business entity. Now, imagine that most of the analytic queries target the category of the product. Instead of performing three joins each and every time the query is run, we can denormalize the data model and put all the attributes within one table, DIM product. As you may see, we would have redundant data for the product subcategory and product category. What are the benefits of denormalization? Instead of loading multiple tables in your data model, you'll have only one, which could be more efficient in terms of storage and performance, as there will be no more relationships between these tables and thus potentially the smaller memory footprint of the data model would be. Filter propagation between the tables sometimes may be less efficient than filters applied to a single table. It's not possible to establish a hierarchy between the fields from multiple tables, so if you need to create a hierarchy of, let's say, product category, subcategory and product itself, you must have all these columns available within a single table. However, don't jump to a quick conclusion that denormalization 
should be your preferred way of data modeling in Power BI. Creating giant, flat tables containing tens of columns and millions of rows is usually the shortcut to self-destruction. Vertipak database, which we've already discussed in the previous modules, doesn't like tables that are both tall and wide. Keep in mind that denormalization makes sense in scenarios where you have snowflake dimensions with not much data in them, or when you need to have data organized in hierarchies. I'm in the model view in the Power BI desktop, and as you may see, I have a simple data model that consists of the fact online sales table and three dimension tables, DIM product, DIM product subcategory, and DIM product category. Product is a snowflake dimension because three normalized tables describe one business entity. As we've already explained in the previous video, in case you need to display the sales amount for each product category, the query would need to perform three joins in the background. In addition, let's say that I need to create a hierarchy in the data model. That will include product category, subcategory, and product itself. I'll create a hierarchy for the product category name. But once I try to include the product subcategory name, it's not possible. Remember, you cannot create hierarchies that include fields from different tables. So, let's denormalize our data model. I'll use Power Query Editor in this case. Since DIM product and DIM product subcategory tables are connected with the relationship, we can pull the columns from the DIM product subcategory table directly. Let's add product category key and product subcategory name. Now, these two columns are part of the DIM product table. The next step is to grab the product category name. As this table is not directly related to DIM product, we need to apply some additional logic. I'll merge queries, choosing the DIM product table and DIM product category table. The common column between these two tables is product category key, so we'll perform left outer join on this column. Once I confirm this, I'll be able to pull the product category name as I did previously for the subcategory name. Because we have all the necessary data in the DIM product table, we don't need DIM product category and DIM product subcategory tables in our data model anymore. Therefore, I'll right click on both of these tables and disable load. Hit close and apply and, as you see, now we have only DIM product in the model. Let's now try to create a hierarchy again. Now, it worked like a charm. To conclude, denormalization is a very useful data modeling technique in certain scenarios, especially when working with snowflake dimensions that don't contain a huge amount of data. For the remaining cases, especially if your fact table consists of many rows and many columns, the regular star schema should always be your preferred choice. That's all folks. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to click this uh, like button down below. Also, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest feature in Microsoft Fabric, uh, Microsoft Power BI, and also to master the DP600 Fabric Analytics Engineer Certificate, make sure to subscribe to Data Motor channel. See you soon!